Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Coming to you from the city that never sleeps, Nairobi region, the Great Debaters Contest, Austin Nyumbok. And Mariam Bishar, today the lovely ladies of Parklands Aria and Gara Girls have graced us with their presence. They are debating on whether Africa should focus more on innovation that improves the quality of our lives. We'll let the debaters take the stage now. First proposer, you have three minutes. Well, well, well. Innovators once said, Innovation is a proof of a knowledge-based economy. Me, being part of this knowledge-based economy, salute you all. From Parklands area, it's Charity Wanja, here to propose the motion that states, African businesses should focus on innovations that improve the quality of life. What are these African businesses? African businesses are activities carried out to provide goods and services in Africa with an aim of making profit. What are these innovations? Innovations are new ideas or new ways of doing something. Let's not, talk, let's not go far. Talk of Safaricom. Safaricom is a business aimed at providing phone services. In 2007, Safaricom innovated M-Pesa. M-Pesa has improved the quality of life in that Nairobi, if you are in Nairobi and you want to send money to a particular person who is not very close to you, you can use this you can use M-Pesa to send your money, and therefore, this has improved the quality of life. On the side of Safaricom, many people have joined this, this branch, and they are, they are profitable to this age. Let's talk of banking. Equity Bank came up with ideas uh, in 2007 that offered free opening accounts. We also enjoy low interest rates, and furthermore, we do not need security to get a loan. Through these innovations from Equity, many of us have benefited. The Equity Bank has benefited because many people have joined this bank. And for that, I rest my case. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening remarks. When I was asked my take on this motion that multi-African businesses should focus on innovation that improve the quality of lives, I remembered my grandmother saying, telling me, Hafsa Yusuf, you have to run in life. If you cannot run, you have to walk. If you cannot walk, you have to crawl. But make sure that every step you take, you make a move in your life. And this is what innovations do. By the way, before I start, I'm actually wondering how the proposal is supporting us, because we are opposing the motion, supporting that innovations do help in our lives. And she talked about Safaricom helping us, so I'm actually wondering. The motion is about, let me repeat for them, multi-African businesses should focus on innovation that improve the quality of life. Now, let's take a look at South Africa. South Africa earned independence in the year 1994 in comparison to one of the African countries, precisely Kenya, that earned in 1963. You see, South Africans take Take the advantages of the innovations. Take a look at their transport sector, their communication sector, their horticultural. This is what helped them to be, uh, to have tremendous development in both social and economically. Now, computers. Computers are the best innovation that I've ever invented currently. Computers are used in a variety of ways. I can be sitting in my office right now, but still transact a business to a person in South Africa, Malaysia. Imagining if the computers weren't there. You could have traveled through the aeroplane or the buses, or you could have also wasted a lot of time. This is a wastage of time. We are saving on money. Money that, that, money that could have been improved for the welfare of the Africans, for the welfare of Kenya, of Uganda. Why can't we utilize this money? Also, 
Computers help in that managers are able to conduct online meetings without necessarily going to where the meeting has to take place. Now, these also serve on money and also on cost. Computers provide a platform for small-scale and large-scale businesses to advertise. Trust you me, when you advertise through the channels, you incur a lot of costs. But through computers, you do incur a lot of costs. Now, who can prefer that unless you're very rich? We are Kenyans. This is how we are going to. In this is how we are going to develop Africa. It's the second largest continent yet, but still. We're not even going anywhere. Now, also on calculators, let's go back to our classes. We all use calculators. Now, calculators help in a variety of ways. For example, I'm a KCSE student waiting to, to do, waiting to do a mathematics paper. Now, I'm very tensing, I'm very tensing, but still, I know, knowing that the mathematics paper bases on my life, my future bases on that paper. Now, what am I supposed to do? But hey, I have a calculator. No, that is the best innovation. And I'm urging my proposing team to look on their arguments and points. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now. Proposers, you have three minutes. Representing the Honorable Girls of Parklands area, I'm Masikoki. Here to propose the motion that states that African business should focus on innovations that improve the quality of life. For correction, my colleague was not giving a point. She was just explaining the motion. If there's anyone who is confused in this debate, it is you. I don't understand how you can sit there and say that computers help improve the quality of life, yet you are supposed to tell us how Africans should not come up with innovations because they do not improve the quality of life. I'll tell you how Africans should I'll tell you how innovators should come up with innovations that improve the quality of life. The biggest slums in, in the world are in Africa. Take, for example, Kibera in Kenya and Soweto in South Africa. In these slums, I'm talking from experience, the hygiene is pathetic. So, the, as Africans, we should come up with innovations that help improve this situation. Uh, Sun Energy, which is an organization that helps in bringing sustainable sanitation to sub-Saharan Africa, has come, with, has come up with portable toilets that come with sawdust, soap, and water. These portable toilets are taken to slums where they are used, and at the end of the day, the waste is removed, and then it is used to make cheap fertilizer. Through these sanitations, my, life's, my life has been better because now I can walk in my slum, I can walk feeling free without walking like I'm skipping rope. If that's not improving the quality of life, I don't know what is. Opposition, you have three minutes as well. Both of us have two jobs to do. It's either we're listening or talking. This is the trick. I talk, you listen. Now, looking at the motion we were given, it states multi-African businesses should focus on innovations that improve the quality of life. If you're proposing the motion, then you're saying whatever innovations they have brought are not actually improving the quality of life. Now, as we oppose the motion saying that the innovations are actually improving the quality of life. Let's underline the word should. On to my first point. Now we have the W, the World Health Organization, introducing the genetically modified organisms. Now most of us have been reluctant to accept this. Now, it has worked in several countries, one of them being Kenya. 2.5 million children across Africa were helped because they lacked vitamin A. But after they were given these products, I'm telling you their lives were saved. Now, you come and tell me again, maybe it has side effects. But I'll tell you, no, my biology tells me 
that it's the best product out of one thing and the best product out of another. They're brought together to bring something that is better than wherever it was brought from. Now we have the drought resistant crops. All the time Africa keeps on complaining. There's famine, we don't have food. But here are businesses which are ready to offer us GMO, drought resistant crops. Let's accept them. We have small businesses. Small businesses that need to bank their money. We're talking of businesses that earn as little as 100 shillings in a day. Let me not talk of 100, maybe 50 shillings. Now they want to fend for their family and still put some for future use. There is M-Pesa. They can see, simply load it in their phone. Now here is the invention of things that are actually helping both the small business farmers and even the large-scale business farm farmers. We have the good transport system. Now we are all conversant with the book, The River and the Source. It talks of Akoko and how she wanted to take the treasurer's journey to go to Kisuma, the present day Kisumu. Now it talks of her traveling for three days, but I'm talking of coming from Nairobi to Kisumu in 45 minutes using the aeroplanes. So let's embrace these innovations. And if there are any entrepreneurs here, it's not enough. Beware, take care, and take on a new dare to put a solution in occurring problems. Thank you. When you need a friend, Mbesa. When the bank's too far away, Mbesa. When you need a loan, Mbesa. When you're sick, Mbesa. 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 Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. So the proposition have been asked, are they in support of innovation, yet it can cause uh, Africans to lose their jobs? For example, tea pickers who would lose their jobs to machinery. And the opposition have been challenged to simply explain their view on the motion. <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. My name is Sarah from Parklands Area Girls. Now, I have a question here, and uh, he asked that 63 tea pickers are going to lose their job. I believe so because of innovations. Okay, let me give an example. Maybe some of us did not understand the point on our second proposal, what she said about sanitation. She was actually giving an example in South Africa about the exclusive toilets that have been introduced there. And she was actually trying to make sense and to put sense in us and to tell us, even though there are a few Africans who are focusing on, uh, who are using these exclusive toilets, they should also be uh, introduced in some other parts of Africa. For example, these exclusive toilets can be taken to places like Kibera and they, they can decide not to charge them or they can decide that um, they employ people, that's an innovation, that they, um, they employ people who are going to be collecting those exclusive those exclusive toilets and taking them to the respective places. So I don't understand why you're saying that um, that innovation is going to reduce job opportunities. Let me go to my first point. First of all, maybe some of us are misunderstanding this topic. African businesses should focus on innovations that improve the quality of life. According to my understanding, it is simply telling us that the innovations that Africans have put in place are not actually improving the quality of life and that they should come up with other innovations that will actually improve the quality of life. Let me start by saying that Half of Niger's population is having a food shortage. And it is being told that it is not that the farmers, and, and the causes of the food shortage is because there's a grain shortfall. And it is said that it's not that farmers are not growing enough corn, but it's just because the storage is poor. Most of our, uh, most of these um, 
uh, companies working with agriculture, I believe it's a business. They have come up with uh, ways of storing maize and sometimes they tell us, dry them in the sun and then you store them and all that. But here is an interesting person called Larry Murdoch. He came up, he's an entomology professor and he came up with these propylene bugs. Now, these propylene bugs have three layers and three, these three layers, they prevent oxygen from getting into the maze. Now, these sacks, when they prevent, when the three layers prevent, and they, by the way, the three layers are very tough. So, um, I don't expect a question, someone asking me of rats uh, getting access to the sacks because the, the sacks are really tough. And he said, and this oxygen, preventing oxygen from entering the, the, the sack, is, um, shows that the bacteria won't have oxygen because bacteria is living. It won't have oxygen to survive. Therefore, there will be no shortage of food because of pests eating our crops. So that is an innovation that African businesses should focus on. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. My prefix is Swada, my suffix is Hassan. Someone asked me to clarify this motion. Multi-African businesses should focus on innovations that improve the quality of life. This means that these multi-African businesses, with all the other innovations that come upon with them, are not focusing on improving the quality of life, but are striving to achieve other objectives. Them proposing means that the African businesses do not care about the quality of life of the human beings. As opposing the motion simply means that we really support the African businesses with all the innovation that they come up with. Let's go to the medical sectors. And allow me to journey with you through the days of the past, the days of mediocrity, the days of primitiveness, whereby when you get ill, you're just considered a dead body already. When you get a disease like malaria, you are a bad omen to the society. When you get tuberculosis, you are, you are just a disgrace. When you get HIV and AIDS, let me even not get there. But what happened with innovation? African, decided, African businesses embraced these innovations. We, they came up with curative medicines and preventive medicines. Tell me, isn't that improving the quality of the human life? Then, this decrease in the mortality rate with the research that was made by the World Health Organization that proves that right now with the generation that we are living in, 95% of the diseases in the world are actual, actually curable or preventable. We have immunizations, we have vaccines all in the hospitals based in Kenya and based in the African businesses. Tell me, isn't that improving the quality of the human life? There are sophisticated machines that were made. Earlier this year, Kenyatta Hospital was begging for financial aid so that they could have the radiotherapy and chemotherapy machines taken to their hospitals. Once we have these machines and the African businesses decided to do them that exact favor that they really need, is in that improving the quality of the human life. We are talking about big diseases like cancer. You can actually get cured when you have cancer or even live longer when you have cancer at the later stage. It's in that improving the quality of the human lives. Let me take you to the industrial sectors of this. Let me take you to the industrial sectors of Africa. We have a variety of products being produced day in, day out. And actually an Englishman says that variety is the fun of life. Once we have this, just, talk, just go to any supermarket or any trading activity outside there, you'll get all the, all the goods that you really need. Sources of energy, we talk of solar, we talk of electricity. Actually, I'm not a terrainic person as my mother got me tested, but it will sound like revolution if you oppose us. Kindly come to our place because African businesses are actually improving the quality of human lives. Thank you. Closing submissions now. Proposes you have one minute. You know, I'm just so shocked. Did you just say that Africans are improving on the medical sector? Oh my God. You know what? I recently read the story of Churchill, a boy featured in the Standard newspaper on June 25, 2015. 
Chichil was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure because there is no facilities to help treat him in Africa. He was then taken to India. Maybe there is facilities, but why did he opt for an option to go to India? Because that shows that African businesses are not doing enough in the medical sector. And I believe that's a lot, you know, that's just the fact. It's the fact we have so many people dying out there because of food shortages, people going to India for treatment, and yet you're trying to convince me that African businesses are doing enough. Oh my God, I have no say. Opposition, you also have a minute. You know, many other times when you say necessity is the mother of inventions, but how many of us actually embrace the innovations taking place? I refuse to be put as one of the olden times Pharisees who used to say one thing and believe in another. Now the African businesses are presenting their innovations in front of us, but how many countries are ready to take them in? Now you're talking of Kenya and that girl who lacked, the boy who lacked something to help him. Now, we're supposed to look at the survivors of cancer. We have someone like Anyang Nyongo, he's lived for more than 20 years. We've not heard of him going in and out and going everywhere. He's still in Kenya. Now what the Africans should do is actually accept what the African businesses are ready to offer. Now most of you come in and crying every day that I don't know Mpesa this, Mpesa that. Why don't you use it and start seeing how much it can actually help you? Thank you. For Parkland's area, I think what you were saying is that the innovations that are there, okay, are not necessarily relevant in terms of improving the quality of life. And that we need to focus on innovations that can actually in, um, improve the quality of life. And you, talk, you give examples about, about what you think would actually be innovations that improve the quality of life. I think one of the references you make is to the, you know, the, 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 the toilets. And, and you know, looking at that as improving the quality of life and drawing from the fact that Af the African continent has some of the largest slums in the world where some of these very basic uh, uh, essential services are not there. And that is what we need to be focusing on, which was also very good on your part. I would want to address Ngara girls, and I think Yusuf starts off the team very well. Strong speaker, passionate, it was very evident. And, um, you know, the side that you took as well, um, I, I know we were at, at, at times trying to battle, where are you? But it exactly comes out very strong, especially when now Grace even comes to sum up and say, we're talking about embracing what is already there so that now we can improve, improve the quality of life. Um, so Yusuf, very passionate, good speaker. Uh, Grace as well, very passionate, good clarification. But I felt at some point there was a, there was a lot of clarification being done across the teams. What we are saying is this, what we are saying is this, sometimes you don't want to dwell much on that because you want to give what you have, the submissions that you have. Hassan as well, um, you also tried to explain what, you was, you, what your stand was and you took almost a minute doing that, but you give very good submissions as well. I think you also stood out with the examples that you gave. It was a commendable job by the two teams. Maybe Parkland's area, what you could have done, you could have outlined areas where you want to focus. You know, which areas do you want to focus? And maybe during your opening speech, you tell us you're going to focus on this area, this area, and this area. And now expound on them using examples. It could have been a better presentation. Tungara girls, of course, I've gotten the message that here the thing is not that Africa needs new innovations, but we need to embrace the innovation that is already in place. And my first question to you is, is it true that Africa has not embraced innovation? And I wish maybe you could have used figures. These were numbers could have worked wonders and say, according to this research, this percentage, etc. So that was my first question. Number two, you made mention of was it Kenyatta National Hospital? And my question is this, is it that Africans are not really embracing or are there other challenges that are plaguing Africa to make them not embrace that particular innovation? Do we have economic challenges? Is money a problem? So that re Africans really want to embrace it, but the problem is the funding is not there or the money is simply not there. Parklands area, you have 68%. Please give them a hand. Ngara girls, you have 
69%, making you the winners of this debate. We congratulate the two teams for such a wonderful effort and send our gratitude to Safari Mempesa and KBC Channel One, urging members of the audience and also our viewers back home. Follow us on Twitter at Great Debaters EA and all our other social media platforms. I am Austin Yumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. We'll see you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.